everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from truly gorgeous Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up on the show today, Dan, uh, one of our own <laughs> gets... Uh, <laughs> The, Are we claiming uh, him still? Is he still one know. of us? He gets he gets the cancel treatment. Like what's what's going on here? Anyway, uh, Richard we Dawkins. Just, we, we need to talk about we've Richard Dawkins' story, but we're going to talk about it. And uh, yeah, he's, I'm, he's I, being. I'm defrocked. not much about canceling, but we need we definitely need to talk. You and I have been saying for about a decade now that someone needs to take away his Twitter, but <laughs> he has once again proven why. Who did he ever? All right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about that. Dan. Yes. I'm going to tell you a story. Oh, And please. you're going to swear I'm talking about Alabama. Okay. But I'm not. I'm talking about Bavaria. Dun, dun, ah, dun. Yes. The Alabama of Germany. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know this. I thought it was just all beer and uh, sausages. Um, it's it's girls in dirndls and uh <laughs> and and hate i don't yeah. know anyway there um the the state minister president what a great title that is minister president <laughs> i feel uh, like that's two titles that got mushed together <laughs> but okay fine uh marcus soder uh has uh, announced that crosses must hang in all state government buildings. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the, this 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 move is is out of a commitment to Bavarian identity and culture. Oh, wow. Perfect. Great. Yeah. Um, he says that the the cross is not a sign of religion. <laughs> <laughs> This is not a violation of the principle of neutrality, right? Oh, good. He says good. that, uh, yeah, the, the, the cross is, it's just part of their culture. It's, it's part of their Bavarian cultural imprint and identity. Uh -huh. um, it has yeah, nothing there's to never do with been a problem. Nothing. There's never been a problem with uh, secular Germany using uh, non-secular symbolism. <laughs> For uh, yeah, as 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 a as a sort of means of rallying people together around a culture, that's never been a bad no, thing. I don't think. Of course not. Um, is it the Iron Cross? Are they actually going with the Eisernes Kreuz, or are they? <laughs> no. Are they? No, this is a good okay. old fashioned uh, Christian cross. And uh, well, lest you be lest you be fooled by his claims that it has nothing to do with Christianity, the cross that he was actually shown. Uh, putting up right uh -huh. um it it was one that hung in the cabinet room until 2008 uh and was a gift from the former munich cardinal uh friedrich vetter uh oh, and a, a uh, gift from a cardinal that's not yeah religious and don't also, worry about it uh consecrated by the cardinal oh good but no 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 a purely secular symbol having nothing to do with roman catholicism right it's <laughs> it's one of those secular consecrated catholic crosses <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know those <laughs> they're everywhere these uh, days it turns out bavaria is actually quite religious um it's uh, like you said i don't it's probably not fair to call it the alabama of, no, no, of no. germany I've, I've been there it's beautiful it's, oh, it's alabama is a lovely place to look at and to drive through. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's not maybe. bad. It's got trees. Little parts. They're, they're, yeah. There's Which is mo Spanish moss sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's That's, lovely. That can, be, that can be cute. It's also Whatever. home to the only drive-by shooting I've ever seen. Yes, indeed. That's true. Holy crap. That's true. We, we saw some shit in Alabama, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> Uh, I will not let that experience taint my overall opinion of Alabama. No, I uh, did not. Actually, actually met did some nothing wonderful to people. alter my opinion of Alabama. That, <laughs> right. that says a lot, <laughs> I think, right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. That happens and we go, yeah. uh, we our, our opinion remains the same. <laughs> that's, 
It's not a great sign, Bama. It's not the best sign, anyway. Anyway, we'll we'll see how Bavaria turns out. Yeah. Uh, I am. I so I know that you hate it, but I still enjoy my time on Facebook. Mm. Uh, and it's about to get better, y'all. Uh, yeah, I. <laughs> There's apparently they're they're beta testing a new a new uh a new something a new feature oh on Facebook that can happen in in certain groups okay introducing prayer posts oh god well they know who's left yeah <laughs> good lord Apparently, uh, in their year in review for 2020, Facebook figured out that uh, on Easter and Passover, uh, which fell sort of right when everybody was like first locked down at home, uh, they literally saw a huge uptick in uh, like video calls and face uh, on Facebook Messenger and uh, fa- a huge Facebook Live. Like Facebook live broadcasts went up a ama- like huge, yeah, and they realized, oh, well, what they realized, of course, is there's money flowing out of the Christians' butts, <laughs> like we can i can we can milk that for all it's worth, <laughs> yeah, so they developed uh, a uh, some sort of liaison a, a a head of global faith partnerships oh God. at Facebook. This person named Nora Jones, which is interesting. Hmm. Anyway, uh, Ms. Jones uh, is a former pastor or perhaps a current pastor with her husband. Okay. And, uh, and they're working on making sure that Facebook has features that serve the needs of or rather or uh, of the faith in the in the world but also probably that just can get more ads in front of more eyes oh all golly really so like want to do. it's like prayer posts is what you said right yeah and it's unclear what that means do you have to like uh, first point? friend the deity of your choice and then right you can pray right? to them like uh yeah how do they deliver these prayers <laughs> yeah but yes it it does say that uh like gr- it, what we know is that certain groups um, have enabled the, are able to enable this, and they group members can ask for and respond to prayers in a post. I think this sounds perfect for the members only lounge. Oh, we gotta get it. <laughs> I gotta find it. I don't know how I get it on there, but the second it becomes available to me, y'all. We're praying in the lounge. <laughs> it's going to happen. And uh, and they will uh, all be to something other than Yahweh. <laughs> Go ahead. Pray to Satan. Pray to Frank and Dan. Mm. Pray to anybody you want to, just not uh, Jehovah the Ding Dong. Right. Eh, it's all equally useless. So Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You'll get the same result. <laughs> just pick a god. It doesn't matter. <laughs> all right. Dan. Speaking yeah. of just picking a god, actually, yeah. that doesn't make any sense. That was just a terrible, <laughs> terrible transition. Um, the uh, prime minister of Pakistan this week uh, it ha- has called on Western governments to uh, treat insults against the Prophet Muhammad in the same way, with the same seriousness as they treat the Holocaust. Oh! Right? So, and uh, and to enforce this, he is also calling upon uh, Muslim-majority countries to band together to lobby Western governments to criminalize the insulting of, uh, you know, Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Um, And he says, we need to explain why this hurts us when in the name of freedom of speech, they insult the honor of the prophet. When 50 Muslim countries unite and say this and say that if something like this happens in any country, then we will launch a trade boycott on them and not buy their goods. That'll have an effect. (laughs) 
And to that I say, sure, that'll have an effect. Yeah, um, real, real big effect. We're, we're all shaking in our boots there, Pakistan. <laughs> First of all, like, it's... The, the, I mean, how many countries actually have laws on the books about Holocaust denial, right? Like, I'm pretty sure it's like one. Yeah. Like, it's this, Germany. It's not Western nations, right? Like, right? Like, it's like, no, like, you can... Come to the United States. You can deny it all you want. And you guess can what? Deny everything. We're going to insult your I, profit too if we feel like it. Here's here's where I'm inter- uh, what I find interesting and perhaps hopeful about this whole stupid story. <laughs> he's not denying the Holocaust. Oh. At least he's acknowledging that the Holocaust happened <laughs> and was serious. What progress? That feels great. <laughs> But I think he gets something wrong about Holocaust denial, right? Um, (laughs) Right. He says that um, the the Western nations um, understand understood that questioning the Holocaust hurt the sentiments of the Jewish community, and I don't think that's what what any sort of law about it is about. It's about how dangerous. uh, that speech is not yeah. that Jewish feelings are hurt. Now, maybe, maybe some feelings get hurt in the process, but I don't think that that's what the it's about the, the safety is. of it. It's about not propagating dangerously uh, hateful speech against a group of people whose lives are yeah. on the line. Right when you deny the Holocaust and speech that had historic consequences well yeah not not denying the holocaust but like you know hating jews right? right the 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 consequences of that like like this is holy crap right like like yeah. I, I think i think he he i think it's a an easy sort of cheap comparison for him to score some points um well, and he I may mean, actually he... just clearly not understand it or get it or he did godwin's law on himself (laughs) yeah do you you know godwin's law i don't don't think so that's the that's the one that any uh any discussion any argument oh leads to the uh, yeah on on the internet will eventually get to get to a holocaust reference if it goes on long (laughs) enough well i mean if the topic at hand is the holocaust you can't exactly (laughs) <laughs> but the topic at hand isn't the Holocaust. It's it's, it's Muhammad. Hey, stop making right. fun of our of right, our right, prophet. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, yeah, so we'll have to see how this goes. I'm very curious mm. to see where this where this leads. I want them to do this. I want them to band together. I want yeah. them. I want them to see what Western <laughs> nations, the, the 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 universal shrug, yeah. of France and the United States and Germany. Here's the thing. <laughs> I am 100% opposed. Like, I think that there is a real problem in the world Mm -hmm. with anti-Islam hatred. Mm. And and, and Islamic people, especially in the Western world, you know, in the United States and in Europe, get treated like shit. Yeah. So there is very real problematic beliefs and language language out there hurting muslims but that's the issue yeah but not sh- a caricature <laughs> of the prophet muhammad that right. hurts and guess their what? feelings i'm gonna say it. your prophet was dumb you had a dumb prophet dan dan He's dumb do you I'm know hurting their feelings <laughs> well, i'm hurting their feelings draw a picture <laughs> add that to it dan and no, frank's you're the one that get, draws the picture you're gonna get the purple room uh blowed up yeah yeah no i but the but the fact of the matter is that like yeah it's it's hate speech that's the problem not criticism of your statutory yeah, rapist exactly uh, yeah agreed leader yeah i agree all right uh so there is some new data that is very interesting uh, a new study has come out. Now, we've talked about a few studies that have come out talking about the health of uh, religious people versus the health of non-religious people. There was a whole bunch. There was a study that came out a while ago that said that religious people who attend church regularly are more healthy than 
people who don't. And then a lot of speculation happened about like what that that must mean that they're more healthy than atheists. And then another study came out that said that no, being an atheist, you're probably just that that show that atheists are just as healthy right. as regular church attenders. Well, the the first really interesting uh, new wrinkle in this line of things has just come out, and I'm fascinated by it. Okay. This is uh the, there was a group called the General Social Survey, or or is, I guess that's not the group that's the survey itself. Uh, and uh, this and also another survey called the National Congregation Study, both sort of just collect a whole lot of data from people by doing interviews and then ask and ask them questions about their religion and about uh you know the circumstances of their religion. And then about their health. They ask people to self-report their health. Well, it turns out that there's one st- statistically significant uh, difference in two different groups that go to church regularly. Okay. Women who go to church, who go to sexist churches, self-report a health score of 3%. Uh, of of 2.79 whereas women who go to inclusive churches that are less sexist uh report a health score out of 5 of 3.03 okay so women who go to churches now the way that they've determined what a sexist church is versus an inclusive church is that they will ask uh they so they had a few things they I think there were four questions that they asked uh to determine this uh, can a woman be their main leader? Can a woman serve on the governing board of the church? Can a woman preach at the main worship service? And can a woman teach a co-ed class? Ah. Oh, right. Okay. So those are all the things. Now, if, if you don't have to hit all four to be a sexist church. If a woman is, ba- if women are banned from being the leader of the main leader of that church, uh-huh. It is sexist. So okay. Mormonism, I mean, we're all shocked to learn that Mormonism is considered sexist by somebody. <laughs> right. But it turns out that the health outcomes are worse for women, Just and this only applies to women, but women in churches that don't honor them have worse health outcomes than church, than women in churches that do, or at least <sighs> that treat them equally. Isn't that amazing? So does it have to do with a woman's just sense of worth? And so she takes better care of herself? Like, I don't understand how that's... I feel like that would just be speculation at this point. Because yeah. we, what we don't have is a causal uh, line to draw. But, but yeah, I mean, what else is it going to be? Yeah. That's so <clears throat> crazy. It's... Okay. Cool. So there you I go. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's it's bad for your health to uh, to associate yourself with a group that believes that you're worth less than the boys. Yeah. Good. Great. Which okay sounds. I mean, that makes sense. We're we're currently shocking exactly zero percent of our right. listeners. Right. What, but and they didn't look at men at all. No. No uh, issues actually, for men. That would have been really interesting, but no this this huh. study this study was published in the American Sociological Review. Uh, this study doesn't look at that. That I, would be it would, fascinating. It would be interesting, like <clears throat> if men in like you know settings that were you know behaved more favorably to women, like if you know their their little you know misogynist feelings were hurt and. <laughs> But I actually think the opposite may, might know, well be true. I know it would be, but like, anyway. Right, yeah. <laughs> but, like, I mean, it's, it turns I mean, out that actually liberal churches are bad for men, <laughs> which right. is why they seem to thrive so much in the douchebag right. ones. <laughs> but no, I mean, it's like we've talked about before. Toxic masculinity yeah. is toxic it is. to men. Yeah. It's not just toxic to women. It's not just bad for women. It's really bad for men, so. Uh, yeah, I'd love to see, actually, that. Uh, yeah. Uh, those numbers well the uh, i hope they the, look at it and let the us person, know 
The woman who uh, who co-authored the piece, a woman named Patricia Homan, should get on it. Somebody, somebody, write her an email. Yeah, we find need, her. We need the concurrent study. <laughs> All right. Well, Dan. Yes. Uh, it is time in Poland for their census. Dun dun dun. And behold, the Lord, they, they said unto them, there is a census, and you must now go to the home of your ancestors to be counted. Indeed. And so they are uh, moving about the country. Because that's a logical way to do a census. No, I know. It's, it's silly. Anyway, um, so 10 years ago, for the, the 2011 census, the numbers came back that... Ninety-six percent of the country was Roman Catholic. <laughs> wow, ninety-six I mean, percent. Okay, I've been to Poland. I I have seen on their country highways how every mile and a half there's a shrine of something or other. Yeah. Well, or or my our favorite thing, which was there were big giant twelve foot tall crosses. Yeah. With tiny little. Barbie Jesuses on them. <laughs> they were crucifixes, but Jesus was so disproportionately small compared to the crosses. Oh, no. It was very, very strange. Um, so activists are actually, they they have questioned these numbers, right? Ah. Uh, apparently, it's only like in the 20 percentage uh, range of the country that it, that attends church, right? Ah. That actually goes to, to, to mass. Um, and they know that there are other religious groups functioning in the country. Uh, and it's so just, just anecdotally, it would seem that this, this number just isn't quite right. And so the activists are, are calling on people to not just automatically to tick the box for like cultural identification, right. but to actually think about it and say, you know, like maybe you're Christian, more generally or maybe you're atheist or deist like there are other things you can check that would be good for you to check because if you don't like the fact that the roman catholic church has all this fucking influence and that the powers that be in this country uh use this 96 percent of the country as catholic uh stat to ram through you know like they just passed like complete abortion ban. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. and there, there's a bunch of other things that they do. I I guess catechism is just like compulsorily taught, um, in this public schools. Um, grab you off of your bike and catechize you. (laughs) But, um, but, and interestingly enough, like younger people, you know, who were taught catechism by force, uh, at, at school, um, they're growing up to not be very religious at all. And so they want this to change and they see this as, as a way to do that. And so they're working really hard right now. And I just thought that was really, uh, interesting thing to bring up, you know? Yeah. I think that that's great. We'll see if it has any effect. Well, I mean, if the numbers fall off at all, I would think it would have, it it would be a real boon. I mean, it's going to have to be another 10 years before, People might start to, you know, I mean, these things don't happen overnight. I guess a lot of parents just kind of like fill out their, uh, the, 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 the census report yeah. for their kids. And so they're just right. like checking that all their kids are Catholic. Right. Right. Um, and so they're, you know, if, if people can start standing up and saying, no, actually I'm not, yeah. you know, it, hey, it changes hey a country's perception of itself. It's yeah. really important. You know? Don't just be the default. Maybe yeah. maybe actually give it some thought. Yeah, so to all our I mean, Polish listeners, you know. It's been 20 years since Pope John Paul died. You can let it go. Has it been yeah. 20 years? It was like 2005. It hasn't quite been 20 years, but almost. That's still a long time ago. Wow. Hmm. But boy, when I was in Poland, that dude's face is everywhere. <laughs> It's like you know he's not pope anymore, right? Oh, they don't care. I don't. I don't think they know. I don't think anybody told him. He's pope. He's their pope. He's, he's their, their special pope. pope. Yeah, and you might as well have a dead pope for all the good that a pope actually does. You, <laughs> dead ones as good as a live one. Doesn't make much difference. 
All right. Well, I am going to turn uh, finally to Liberty University. Oh, God. Which has seen some tumult over the last yeah. year. Yeah. Um, as re- their, uh, their former president, Jerry Falwell Jr., uh, fell down a deep, deep rabbit hole. Uh, he, he, he is his fall from grace. Literally went down a flight of stairs. Do you remember that? No. Do you remember? He got he went, when he was really. I think it was just after he was fired, or sorry, he quote unquote resigned. He literally got drunk, locked his wife out of the house, and tumbled down the stairs. She had to call the cops to let her to to let her in to to like tend to him. Anywho, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's amazing. Am I not supposed to be be delighted by that? Because I am. <laughs> no, I was just like, uh, wow, what a good Christian man, right? Like, right. Well, let's go get is, drunk. I lost my, you know, I, like I have no problem with the man drinking, but he had a problem exactly. with him drinking, right. and. And that was the thing. He was like it was supposed to be a teetotaler, but then one of the things that brought him down was the that picture on a boat with him holding a suspiciously wine-looking beverage that he claimed was literally wine-looking beverage. Like he claimed, no, no, it was meant to look like. He also had his arm around a woman that wasn't his wife, and both of their pants were unbuttoned. But that's. Neither here nor there. He posted Those it on his just own a, feed. Adultery anyway, looking pants. That's all. He he just he just had an adultery looking everything. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's always had an adultery looking face. Oh, uh, so there you go. Uh, so he so he left Liberty University. Well, Liberty is now suing him for ten million dollars. What? Claiming that he uh, lied on his most recent uh, uh, contract negotiation. What? Uh, because, and th- this was the contract negotiation that got him a very sweet uh, severance if he ever were to be fired or, or uh. leave, which he uh, then claimed. But they uh, basically were like, uh, yeah, you presented yourself as this moral guy who would follow the moral code that we had and you didn't oh so i'm gonna need that 10 million back if you please breach of contract yeah that's good isn't that amazing yeah i like that uh, meanwhile also uh one of there there was a, a conspicuous uh vacancy in one of the vp posts one of the vice presidents is now gone too oh. one trey falwell Son of J. Fall Jew, uh, who apparently is now no longer housed at the university either. This family. So it's, it is just, it's, it's, you know, it's tough to be a pastor's kid. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Anyway, there you go. Uh, listen, if you are a pastor's kid who has, is being sued for $10 million, feel free to write into us. Pod, hey, if you're Jerry Falwell Jr., you got nothing to lose. Right into us. Podcast <laughs> at thankgodimatheist.com. <laughs> you might as well be. <laughs> um, or leave and, uh, call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Stick around. There's more show coming up. Hey, Dan. Hey. So, um, Pat Robertson, it's always a delight uh, to, our, uh, to play a good clip Patty boy. of Patty Boy. We'll lose him at some point, oh, but we've got him still for now. Too soon. <laughs> it will be, whenever it happens, it will be too soon. The Lord took him <laughs> too soon. Um, no, no uh, apparently he's discovered the word woke. Um, oh, dear. And so uh, this clip... <laughs> is pretty amazing um yeah he's he's upset about you know the the how american corporations are kind of creating consequences for the state of georgia mm. and yeah. their uh attempts at voter suppression and passing laws to limit voting access and whatnot um 
and he he doesn't think that's such a great thing. So let's let's hear all right. Let's well, hear what let's, he has to let's say. Let's hear his take. What we're seeing is what happened in the Nazis when the Nazi party took over under the Adolf Hitler. Krupp was the great uh, steel company. I.G. Farben was the great chemical company and other of the businesses. You figure Messerschmitt who made the planes and uh, Volkswagen probably made some of the cars. And there are a whole lot of other businesses in in Europe that joined in the work of Adolf Hitler. Mm -hmm. So what are our corporations in America doing? They're turning against their nation, or at least the prevailing ethic and they're so-called woke. Uh, that's the name uh, that I'm, I'm not sure if we have a meaning for, but it means addition to pitching their products to you, they're going to tell you about uh, uh, their politics. And you guessed it, it's going to be far left liberal politics. So what are the serious consequences of this woke attitude of corporations for Christians? It wasn't good during the Nazis, and it's probably not good now for us. <laughs> does, does he know what point he just made? Uh, Pat, what what are you doing, buddy? Do, do you know that you just you just said don't you just said be more like Messerschmitt and Volkswagen, cooperate with the state? You just. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't. I think he was trying to make a different point. Yeah. But um. Yeah. Wow. It's. I kept waiting for the right point to drop. <laughs> I I I was listening to this for the first time this time, <clears throat> and I kept waiting for he. he <clears throat> I I was like, you're you're not making the point. I think you're making. Are you? You're not. You're not saying that Coca Cola and you know, Home Depot or whatever it was. I, I don't Delta Airlines or whatever. Yeah, You're not saying they're supposed to be like the Nazi companies, right? Oh, you are saying that. <laughs> oh. No, I think he I says that they, that they are being like that. Well, but he's wrong. He's wrong because they're, he's... Not, they're not aligning with the state. Right. They're actually they're... opposing. They're taking the, a what, moral what the stance. state is, is trying to do. Right, right. Like what the actually, German companies did was not yeah, take a stand exactly when there was a moral ob <laughs> objection to be had. It's absolutely amazing, but somehow he <sighs> kind of he twists it and contorts it, you know. And you know the everybody's at home going, oh, oh yeah, yeah, all oh, these horrible Nazi, you know, Coca Cola. Yeah, I think what, like, what most of his listeners did was just hear Coke Nazis. <laughs> Bad, and then the, the, that's all they did. I mean, that's but, all right wing media needs to do at this point, right? Yeah, it's true. It's just, yeah, anyway. it doesn't matter if if the line makes no sense. Just yeah, draw the line. Just draw it. That's enough. <laughs> it doesn't really connect, but you go for <sighs> it, man. Oh, my oh gosh. I just and his explanation of what woke is is. <laughs> it's just, I don't think we have a definition for it, but it means. <laughs> Good lord. This, Pat. There's there's a definition. You let, let me introduce you. I'll introduce you to Urban Dictionary. You're gonna have a blast. <laughs> just yeah. There's some rabbit you're, holes you can go down. You're gonna be on it for a while, <laughs> Patty boy. All right. Um, we had some folks write into us. Uh, this is from Anne. Greetings, sirs, Dan and Frank. Hmm. My name is Anne, and I'm one of them queeros. I'm trans and bi. Uh, I'm also from Montreal, and that's the that's the queerest of the things. <laughs> of of the three, that's the queerest. Anyway, that's not the point of this email. I'm currently binging the show, and have started recently, uh, having started recently, and oh. I've come across your segment on gender neutral pronouns in Sweden. Ah, uh, yeah, somewhere around I'm episode four fifty two. Uh, uh -huh. And it got me thinking about the whole thing. I speak French and. It, too, is trying to get people to use gender-neutral pronouns, but people are vehemently and angrily against it. Mm. Well, that's true. French speakers don't, don't want to change their language for anything. Um, for reference, the masculine pronoun is il and the feminine elle. Uh, people have just smashed them together to form il. 
but okay. uh yeah which i el is fine for me uh however uh, and continues french like its sister languages spanish italian romanian etc is gendered in its grammar mm-hmm. it can sound crazy when you're unfamiliar with it but essentially it means every noun is either masculine or feminine yeah including ordinary objects like a spoon the specific gender of a word isn't is 100 percent arbitrary there's no reason what it means is you change the ending of the adjective you change the ending of the adjective based on that yeah so if you're trans then it can become an issue because using your new pronoun outs you essentially mm. you're making a statement of i am gender x by using those endings uh imagine a pre-hormone trans girl most people would see as a boy but if she speaks using her new gender then her transness becomes apparent through speech. Wow. It also is a problem for non-binary people because, grammatically speaking, there has to be a gender. There is no neutral ending. Hmm. I think that's fascinating. I, yeah. It's why... Well, no. Okay. There's a, there's a better reason. There's another real reason. But, like, I hate the gendering of nouns in languages... Is the Romance languages, even German, even the Germanic languages, mm-hmm. like the gendering of nouns is so stupid to me, uh, but largely yeah. because I always mess it up. <laughs> I, it's one of those things that when you're first learning a language that, that does this, right, it's, it's incredibly frustrating, right? Because, yeah. it, because it is arbitrary. And, uh, and, but then at a certain point, it just clicks, and that's just how the language works. And um, I, yeah, I'd never really thought about the consequences in the context of a trans person. That's no, the, yeah, the, and, how, and, and like, and even if you've got a a, a gender neutral pronoun for the person, mm-hmm. you still have to come up with adjectives. Yeah, exactly. And those adjectives are gendered as well. So it's like you just uh, you just put w- whatever vowel isn't currently in use at the end of the words. <laughs> to mark gender. If trans people <laughs> like, manage to get one. rid of gendered language, Ooh. that will be a fucking miracle. I don't... How amazing would that be? I mean... If trans people come up with ways to change the whole fucking language so that it's non-gendered. I... Yeah. I, get I, out I, there, trans people. It. Yeah. I support you. <laughs> I am in your army to... to, to, to st- just so that I don't have to make flashcards to remember that Turnip is she, but little girl is it. Sorry, that's a German thing, but ah, okay, yeah. I'm I'm not the kind of person that can memor that like I'll memorize all of Hamlet, but I can't memorize like all of the genders of just random. Yeah, nouns. because you can't. I mean, you can sit down and memorize it, but it don't. It works best just through usage, right? Yeah. Like just with just, language, you, you, you just need to dive in and start using it people laugh at you enough times you figure it out yeah well it's yeah it's horrifying when you you know mess up something really simple and ask when you a, misgender ask a, a great... child you think you're asking a child where their father is and instead you just asked where the pope is which i <laughs> which i did and that wasn't so much a gender issue but just basic nuance of learning right. a foreign language yeah uh <laughs> where is the pope anyway yeah over there he's in the vatican she was very confused anyway uh nikki wrote into us hi i was born into mormonism and raised in northern utah i'm the oldest of five me and a sister then three brothers the patriarchy is so deep in mormonism i'm the eldest and work in a, in finance slash accounting i was doing so long before my eldest brother had chosen a major and concluded his education but He's the executor of our parents' estate, because of course he is. Never mind that education do- that his education doesn't quite fit what is needed. Never mind that I am eminent- eminently qualified. He's the eldest male child. Mm. It's literally the story of my life. Until my brothers came along and could do the things, I was somewhat grudgingly allowed to help dad with anything. So I learned basic home maintenance, how to mow a lawn, and even basic car maintenance, although that was a bit harder to get Dad to teach me. 
But I was also a good little Mormon girl, so I learned sewing and cleaning and cooking and and budgeting and mar- uh, maintaining a household and more. My parents were at least marginally progressive, and my brothers did learn some cooking and cleaning, but mostly because they would need to know how to do so on their missions. <laughs> the patriarchy maybe didn't completely get my family, but it's always there in everything. It's definitely a feature, not a bug. Mm. Yep. That's uh that gels with everything that I know. Uh although Nikki, I got to say why would you want to be executor of your parents estate? Like oh, literally you just nightmare. dodged a bullet. That's a nightmare. Yeah. That's awesome. You should <laughs> like thank the patriarchy for that one. That's that's great. That's just work you don't have to do. Oh. As far as I'm concerned, you you made out like a bandit on that one. Yeah. Uh all right, and finally, Tim wrote into us. Uh, Tim says the timing of your recent show was very coincidental for me, as I was just about to write you on the same subject. I've been listening to one of John DeLynn's latest interviews with a former Mormon bishop, and this man is a crier. <laughs> He's talking about our last yeah, show. Yeah, okay. When we talked about Mormon men weeping, <sighs> uh, he is a good, decent guy, the kind we would all like to have as a neighbor or a friend. And he has been through the ringer, but boy, is he ever a crier. He also raises something I hadn't considered. Oh, this is so good. I, I hadn't thought about this much either. He's, uh, Tim goes on, you have con- consistently reminded your listeners that m- bishops are lay people and are generally unqualified to provide the level of counseling that is often needed mm. when members of their ward come to them uh, with truly profound issues. Yeah. What this ex-bishop points out is that he doesn't have the training to protect himself from the traumas that he is being exposed to oh, and asked to help with. Yeah. He found himself talking, uh, taking on all that abuse with no way to deal with it. Oh. Delin points out that as a licensed trained therapist, he, Delin, underwent many, many months of training uh, and mentoring huh. on yeah. just that point. Wow. Th- I think that is huge. That's never thought about that. I hadn't really occurred to me. Like I have, I have a friend who's, who's been a psychotherapist for decades Mm -hmm. and is literally like, he talks about how damaged he is. Oh, wow. By all of the, the, and he's trained. He's, I mean, he's trained for it, but even he, you know, you can't listen to people tell you, the worst parts about humanity, the most horrific things. Yeah. And, uh, you know, day in and day out as your job and have that not affect you. But yeah, for these guys who have no training on how to handle that. Oh my God. No wonder some of them break down. That's why they're anyway, crying all the time. They're no wonder they're crying all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord, not safe. That is unsafe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there That's you go. rough. Wow. Ugh. You know, Frank, uh, there are a lot of ways that our listeners can support the show. That's true. Uh, and we appreciate uh, all of the ways that people support us. Uh, the easiest thing to do is to find us on iTunes and go and write a review for us. Yes, you need to give us five stars, and only five will do. I uh, We <laughs> insist upon this. Uh, but, uh, you know, and it's fine if you think we deserve three or four stars. You just still yeah. give us five stars. Right. That's just uh, that's just how this works. Trust just me, the math works out. send us an email that says right. that Yeah, you, exactly. You, you, you feel free to tell right. us you're really only a four-star show, but I gave you five like you said. Um <laughs> But also write a review. That actually helps with the algorithm mm-hmm. quite yep. significantly. And uh, Kathy W. 2011 wrote a review from South Africa. Wow. Uh, and said, best podcast ever. I've I been a fan disagree. of this show for a year or more, and I never miss an episode. Oh. Frank and Dan are witty, insightful, and irreverent. Oh. And the news section of the show is always a delight. Well, that's, that's your opinion. I am horrified by it, frankly, but that's okay, uh, Kathy. Thanks, guys. You make my week. Uh, smiley face. Oh, so, that's great. That's great. Please uh, write us a review. You never know. You may hear it on the show, and it definitely helps. But there's another way to help, Franklin. Do we have some folks to thank? We do, Dan. 
We have Woo-hoo! three new patrons over on Patreon. We have one new teacher Ooh. by the name of Peter. Love it. So he's going to be setting up the sacrament. Uh, we got Jay, who's a new priest, blessing the sacrament. And then Demonium is a new prophet, seer, and revelator. Oh, Those damn. don't come along every day. So, wow. <laughs> thank yeah. you so much to the three of you. If you'd like to join them, please go to our website, thankgodimatheist.com, and click on the support tab. It does help us do the show. Um, we have a new goal that we've set up. Go check it out. Um, we're, we are looking to uh, get a little bit of more help with doing the show weekly. Um, yes, that's and, true. We've, uh, we've got new goals. New, new goals. So, um, and as always, we have our top donor to thank, our Lord and Savior, Austin! Woohoo! Hey, Dan. Yes, sir. We have a topic that we're going to be getting to in just a second. But first, there's been something in the works, and we haven't been talking about it, but it's something that we kind of put some feelers out on the show, maybe going on like about two months ago, um, because we were getting a lot of requests to set up a Discord members-only lounge. A, a, a Discord server is what is, is the parlance of Discord. Yeah, yeah. And that's fine. Um, we are didn't, we old curmudgeons? We, Is that we, what we are? We were incapable of this. And so we asked, we put a call out. We got some volunteers to help us out. People in the know. Um, yeah. Well, it's up and running. And you can they've, find it by going they've to... They've done thank the God. Lord's work. <laughs> Indeed. Um, you can find it by going to thankgodimatheist.com um, where you'll be able to find uh, links to... A, you know that and other social media um and i didn't hear back from everybody who's been helping us uh but the three who did let me know how they wanted to be thanked um i i I just want to mention them by name because they've put in a lot of work um rich pause and wrath um and uh if you go over onto discord you'll see them they're moderators over there um and it, basically it's we're a trying, great group it's yeah, a fantastic it's awesome group, group of people and there are others who have helped and when they when they let me know you know by what name they want me to thank them um then we will do that as well on the show but yeah if you're a, if you're a, if you've abandoned facebook uh mm. it, there are many people who hate it uh, and there are plenty of people who just aren't on it but are on discord yeah uh i personally uh can't figure out discord to save my life i feel like the oldest human being on the planet because every time i go there i'm like (laughs) what is happening it's a it it takes a second to get used to if you don't know it um but you know give yourself a challenge go check it out (laughs) um yeah i think i've kind of got it figured now uh and definitely (laughs) like the this is going to be if you're already on discord this is going to be instantly be one of your favorite places to hang out absolutely um and yeah so so that's going to be going on there's different sort of they're not called rooms what are they called what are they channels called? channels there's different channels um and uh and and it is moderated like we kind of mentioned already uh, the the hope is that the the great success of the members only lounge on facebook is sort of replicated as the members only lounge on discord so and you don't have to choose you you can you, could, you can be you both. could be both yeah Absolutely. All right. Uh, well, Dan. Yeah. Um, we have some things we want to talk about. Yeah. Here's the thing. Um, Richard Dawkins has been hugely helpful and influential in helping people figure out that they don't believe in their imaginary friend, God. Yes. Uh, he, he is he's the author of uh, what are his books? Countless books. Um, what, isn't What's he the big the God one? Why delusion? can't I think of it? The God uh, was, Delusion, right? The, the God Delusion. Him? All I could think of was God is not dead, which is the name of a of a Christian movie. So I don't know why that's what came up. <laughs> the God Delusion. He's a he's an evolutionary biologist. Yeah, 
and uh, and and became an early, uh, very huge, uh, important figure in the atheist in the new atheist movement, and that's a big deal. And then Twitter happened, <laughs> and he's insane and embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think a lot of us want to disown him now. And you're not my real dad, Richard Dawkins. Well, um, th- what is it? Am- American humanists did disown he, him. It, indeed. Uh, he was humanist of the year back in... 1996. <clears throat> and uh, and they... Rev- 96, man. They went back yeah. a ways. Yep. But they they uh, they retracted his... his uh, They've revoked the, the honor. They've yeah. sent him a self-addressed stamped envelope <laughs> for him to put the award in and to send it back to them. I don't think they did that. <laughs> I, would, I would love it if they did that, though. Could you, could you please put it back in? It's put it in the box. Oh, my God. Please. Uh, the, the, the straw that broke that camel's back was a tweet that he did uh, on the 10th of April. Yeah. Where he said, quote, oh, God. Okay, brace yourself. Uh, it's not good, everybody. No, I mean, yeah, there's there's some trans hate in this, so that's your yeah, trigger warning. Some, yeah. In two, and also some, like, cr- weird race-baiting stuff. Anyway, in, in 2015, Rachel Dolezal, a white ch- chapter president of the NAACP, was vilified for identifying as black. Some men choose to identify as women, and some women choose to identify as men. You will be vilified if you deny that they literally are what they identify as. Discuss. At which point, the internet took him up on it and vilified <laughs> the shit out of him because he deserved it because yeah. uh, he I, because he's it's a stupid a old mess. man. It's yeah. Uh, look. I I get and he, later he sort of clarified he tried to clarify things by saying I was just asking a question it's it's an academic question I was just it's saying so discuss which by the way <laughs> uh that is a thing that people who are uh it, privileged people say um and don't ever say that I was just asking a question because here's the thing uh straight white dudes have the privilege have have the ability to quote just ask questions as though these are all hypotheticals and they are to us straight white dudes but there are mm. people who have a lived experience yeah with trauma involved and deep deep felt uh issues mm-hmm. uh for whom it is not just a question for whom it is not you're just you're not just asking questions at that point yeah that's a good way of, of, of saying it. Yeah. So uh so that if you find yourself in the privileged position and you are uh just asking questions about a marginalized group, you're doing it wrong. You're doing <laughs> listen to them. Yeah. Just just listen. You shush. So Dawkins did that, uh lost his award from the nineties. And then <laughs> that, that was whole, probably the sting that hurt the most. That's you know? that was that's the most unkindest cut of all. <laughs> uh, and then uh, a whole bunch of other privileged, aging straight white men came roaring to his defense. Oh golly! Uh, as did a whole bunch of uh, turfs, trans exclusionary radical feminists. Um, but yeah, you know that. And and here's the thing. The guys who came roaring to his defense are a who's who of fallen angels in the uh, in our movement in the modern atheist movement. Guys, like can we can we guess some names? Oh sure, throw some out. (laughs) Let's hear what you got. Um, I'm bad at correct. No, (laughs) whoever you're saying, it's right. um, Michael Shermer, the the, oh really. the skeptic guy, the publisher of Skeptic Magazine, who has had, who we have had issues with uh, in terms of this sort of thing. Peter Bogosian, uh, Sam Bogosian Harris did. Uh huh. 
Oh wow, that's too, oh wow. yeah. Bogosian's become basically he's he's basically um, Jordan Peterson light at this point. Huh. Um, I did not and, know that. Hm. Yeah, Sam Harris, who Sam has become Harris, that's whose name was escaping me. Yeah. yeah, he's deeply problematic now too. Yeah, and all of these guys have written things that I like and agree with david silverman's another one he he hasn't written anything that i care about but <laughs> um and i'm sure that that was not necessarily a defense that was very welcomed like that was probably like please just go away no <laughs> yeah. not you i don't know I'll, silverman I'll, <laughs> silverman has been emerging as sort of the uh the de facto face of now republican atheism willing oh. to just just all of these guys are now marching to the beat of, of basically Pat Robertson saying that woke culture is ruining everything for atheists. <laughs> and what's amazing about it is that, you know, you've got a guy, you've got Richard Dawkins, who is an evolutionary biologist, but he's old and stuck in his ways and isn't really listening to the new biologists who are mm. saying, um, dude, Sex and gender are way more complicated than some men choose to identify as women. That's not what this is. We know that. There's science behind it. But, uh, you know, I guess Dawkins wanted to die on that hill. And well, well done. If that was go. the one you wanted. Oh, yeah. boysies. Well, I mean, it, it, it raises some interesting questions um, and things that we've discussed on the show before of just like, you know, I guess I don't want hero worship is kind of coming up as, as a word, but also just like leaders and um, leaders of a movement, you know, mm. and like, like, um, you know, when these who back when these guys were raising their voices and writing these books that were so influential to, um, so many of us, right, that that helped us sort of create, feel good about having a, a a solid framework that was outside of religion, right, for viewing the world and and giving us some some interesting things to think about and some good ideas and good arguments, right? Yeah, like like they they meant a lot these guys to to the yeah. movement, and they they were powerful and important voices at a time that. When when the when atheism was was really starting to coalesce as as a movement, um, I don't know. Is it a movement? I'm still weird about that. But like, <laughs> but whatever like, it is, whatever it is, people starting to come out as atheists or realizing that they were atheists or whatever, right? Yeah. Like that that was something. People finding other atheists online, people finding you know, and these were the these were the guys that we were finding, right? Yeah. And so I don't know that they were ever like leaders of the movement. Oh, they there's were, that word though. again. But they were. They, they were, were though. They were I, I, and they were I, heroes, right? Like they these guys were totally adored. Yeah, and and they are there is a her heroism to them, which is to say that I don't discount for a second what it took for a guy like Dawkins to boldly stand up and say, I don't believe in God, and I think that's the right choice, and I think other people should also stop believing in God. Right. And I think, you know, Christopher Hitchens was was similar. But the but I mean I the thing is oh, that what we yeah. what we need to prove and what what we prove over and over uh, as atheists is that we aren't about the person, right? We are about the ideas. So mm -hmm. the second someone shows themselves to be a dickhead in other ways, mm -hmm. we'll keep your ideas. Thank you for them. Yeah. Please leave us alone. We're not. We're we're not. We're kind of done with you. Yeah. If you can't, if you can't figure out like some of the most basic things, and people are outraged that the humanists took away this award, and it's like, what could be more humanist than just simply not denying the humanity yeah. of a group of people? Like this is just yeah. a denial of their of, of their basic humanity. It's so easy to just 
be okay with trans people. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to like it. You can just realize that you don't have to make their lives any harder. And that's that to me is humanism at its most basic. <laughs> so, yeah. If you can't meet that level like the the bottom bar of humanism, yeah, I think they could take away your award. Yeah. And guess what? It's their award. Yeah. You're they they can take it away. But boy are the, boy are people mad. Are it really? Oh yeah. Who's, I mean just these these white guys or it's mostly white guys. It's mostly <laughs> white guys that are really really pissed. Uh there are I mean Ion Hersey Ali was was oh, mad. Oh really? Yeah. Huh. Uh That's she was mad that she she tweeted that uh it was absolutely scandalous and cowardly. Richard Dawkins is the humanist of the century. It's anyone's guess why the American humanist would succumb to the woke mob. Oh, there. Wow. So there it is. The Boy. word woke is now just weaponized, is, is now just a, a weaponized word by the right. Uh, they've they've taken it over as as, uh, you know, the latest. It, it, it's code for libtard at this point. Yeah. I mean, it was bound to happen. Right. Like. Yeah, but and the thing is that it's the new it's it's the new politically correct, right? Yeah. So, right. And so of course they were going to pile on yeah. to it. Goodbye Richard Dawkins. Well, I mean, we say I feel like we as a show said goodbye to him when he tweeted <laughs> that every woman who finds out that her fetus has down syndrome ha- should abort. Like Oh, you yeah. remember that oh, one? I forgot about that. That was the, that was the one where I was like, "Oh, okay, I don't need you anymore. You're done. <laughs> I just, I'll find I'll find someone <laughs> who doesn't need to tell women that you know that a person with Down syndrome isn't a valid human. Anyway, right? Uh, or you know, like um, you know, what, what what's what's that word eugenics mm-hmm. that people just don't? Yeah, how did he not see that? Yeah, no, like. Anyway, not, not yeah. that I want to be clear. I have no judgment if a if a person doesn't feel like they will be a, a a capable and good caretaker to a person with Down syndrome. I understand that impulse. I do not judge someone who aborts a baby on that on those grounds. I don't That's judge anybody for me. aborting a baby for any reason because if you're making right. that decision, clearly, <laughs> like you've you've you know something. Right. Yeah, about, you've thought about it. You've You're thought making about your it. choices. You're making your decision. Uh, you don't want... I'm on board. Whatever it is, abort, right? Yeah. Like, I'm just not with on it. board with an old white dude telling women what when they should or shouldn't abort. Yeah. Either way, they're he's wrong. Yeah. Anyway, if you guys... I whew, We've stepped in something. I'm pretty sure we're going to get some emails. Uh, feel free <laughs> to write into us, uh, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone yeah. number is 424-666-8442. Hey, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Atheist. Click the like button. And if you'd like to join one of the two members only lounge is, uh, go to thankgodimatheist.com. That includes the Discord. Yeah, so that's, that's awesome. Amazing. Uh, also, we're on Twitter at TGI Atheist. Hey, thanks so much to the Red Rock Hot Club for the use of their fine, fine music. And thanks to Gordon Johnston for the use of his music. And thanks to all of you, dear friends, for tuning in. We sure do appreciate you. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Mm-hmm.